Hello, everyone. We're live, and thank you so much for being here with us tonight. We're here with uh, my partner, as always, uh, Tracy, and also our um, guest tonight, Sharon Kamisa. And we're talking about how we can um, be better about uh, understanding our health through uh, Metaflix, who's transforming health communication uh, with their platform, uh, and which kind of brings together healthcare education and entertainment in one wrapper. And so, as you know, we've been talking with you every month about how we can bring to patients uh, more opportunity, right? All of us, the people, uh, the people of healthcare, uh, more opportunities to be engaged with um, really credible information uh, that allows us to ask better questions and really think about our health and our health care and the health care of our family in new ways. So uh, Sharon is the Chief Commercial Officer at uh, Metaflix, and we're so glad that you're here with us tonight. Thanks, Joyce. I'm really happy to uh, be here. Thanks for having me. I, I should point out that we are in all different time zones here. So no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and afternoon where you are. So I do apologize. <laughs> Although it's gloomy on the East Coast, so uh, it does seem a little evening. Sharon, I was really intrigued when I was introduced to to Metaflex. Um, I, I'm a huge entertainment fan. I was like, how can you actually make um, healthcare information more understandable. So can you, you know, give us an idea of what Metaflix's purpose is and, you know, where, how you're going about to, to do this? Sure. Thanks for asking. So, you know, it's, 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 it's not an easy feat, of course, as we all know, but it's all about storytelling. It's all about really just getting to the heart of telling stories of real people, um, telling stories of doctors, helping people really understand from point A to point B what people are going through. It's a sense of community. It's understanding you're not alone, um, that you're not isolated from the information you need to know. So what we try to do at Metaflix is we take our entertainment background. So our founders all come from the entertainment industry. They come from places like HBO, NBC. Um, they come from the music world. They come from HSN. And we couple them with a group, a cadre of experts. So we have over 300 expert um, physicians. And we bring them together and we're trying to bring the voice back to the physician to tell, help us tell stories. And then we bring patient stories together as well. So our hope at the end of the day that anyone who's a patient, a family member or a caregiver can really come to Metaflix and start to understand um, all the different things that go on, how to diagnose, what people went through and so on. So, you know, just a follow on question about why being health literate is so important for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, knowledge is power. We all, I think we all can agree to that. And at the end of the day, you know, we go to our doctor, our doctor tells us what to do. We do it. And, and that works if you're in the right place, if you have the right physician, or if you have the right specialist, sometimes that's not even the case. Or if you remember to tell them everything, I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes like when I take my car in, I tell them I've been hearing a noise for like two weeks and I get there, there's no noise. Um, it's the same thing when we go to the doctor. We maybe have a, a pain or something happen, and we forget to mention it because we think that this person there should be able to read us. Um, so what we try to do is really get people to understand who they are from the whole person, their whole health, empower them to really be that advocate for themselves. And if they can be that advocate for themselves, they can give the right information to their, their physician, and then they can actually then hopefully get, a, get more information and get better outcome from that. Mm -hmm. I really love what you're saying, you know, about this, you know, health literacy being uh, us getting, I don't know, maybe even a little excited, right, about being engaged in our in our healthcare, even routine, even routine healthcare, you know, for that matter. And we always often talk about serious conditions, but like, what do you think the state of healthcare communications is? I mean, since you guys have really like taken this on in a big right. way. Well, you know, it's it's interesting. We look around and we do healthcare landscapes all the time. And what do we find? So much innovation. I mean, so mm -hmm. many fabulous things going on right now. Everybody is trying to solve for everything. But at the end of the day, we haven't really allowed healthcare communications to keep pace. So the average person doesn't know what's out there and they don't understand what's out there. And even if they have a great app or they have a great um, site that they like to go to, very often it's a sliver of what they really need to know. 
So our goal is not to substitute for that. Our, our goal is to amplify it. Our goal is to really bring together the best of what's out there and then use the storytelling to draw people in so they can relate to these different patients and then they can explore what works for them. You know, is it an app? Is it a website? Is it a person? Is it a support group? Um, but, but everybody should be engaged in their own health and they should see themselves as the captain of their own health. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think that's really important. That's yeah. I, I used to call myself my GC, my own general yeah. contractor. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, healthcare, there's so, there's so much to talk about. Um, what's your approach in terms of the content you're selecting and you know, what, what type of stories that you're trying to tell? Right. So I wish I could say that, that that we just go and we say we want to do a program on X and we do it. It's not really the case. So we, we need to have funding. So we actually work with industry to do what we call edutainment. So that's our edutainment part. And then we partner with the, 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 um, the most credible medical institutions around like Cleveland Clinic and Yale Medicine and different groups and then foundations like the PMD Alliance and um, Breast Cancer Research Foundation, different groups, and they give us that content they've already created. That's vetted content that already comes in. Mm -hmm. But what we're really looking is that story. So if you think about a story with someone with a chronic condition, 80% of people really experience very similar things. It's that 20% that makes it different based on what they have. Right. So we really can learn from any story. Right now we're focused on Parkinson's disease. It's a fascinating disease where everybody approaches it differently. But at the end of the day, all these people feel the same way. They want to find out the best way to live with Parkinson's. They want the best quality life they can have, and they want to be an active member of the community. So mm -hmm. regardless of what story we tell, we're always going to be showing tips and ideas and how people have overcome those situations. So it doesn't really matter if you have a different disease. Now, it will matter when we connect you to research or connect you to clinical trials, but it just in terms of really empowering yourself to really take control, you, there's learning from every person who's living with a chronic disease. Mm -hmm. That's really, that's really true. And, you know, so really what you're saying is that people, patients can trust Metaflix, right? Because of who it is that you're that you're bringing to the table. I know you you talked about that a little bit. Can you unpack it a little bit more for us? You mentioned PMD Alliance. Can you say what that is? Sure. So the part the um, uh, PMD Alliance is the Parkinson's and Movement Disorder um, Foundation and uh, Alliance, and and they're just they're educators. They're out there every day trying to help the Parkinson's community. So it's all about Parkinson's. They're a local group that has a Facebook group, a support group. So we want to bring those people in and those groups in because they're doing the everyday hard work of really communicating to these audiences. Cleveland Clinic is another example. Cleveland Clinic is out there. They're educating their, their, um, their group around them. We want to connect people to Cleveland Clinic because they're reputable. So yeah. at, at the end of the day with Metaflix, we hope to have 15 to 20 of the largest and most reputable medical institutions that we can. And importantly, we don't have ads on our site. We're not trying to push a certain therapy or product or brand. What we really want to do is we're pushing into information, disease awareness information, unbranded information, information that you can use to make your own decisions. Yeah, that's really huge. And I love too that you have, you know, these experts, not only these organizations, but actual individual leading experts, you know, in various chronic illnesses, right? Who can actually, who are vetting your content, right? I mean, you're not just putting things up because, oh, this looks good. I mean, it's actually going through a lens, right, of, a, of an expert point of view. Yeah, I mean, we need peer reviewed, right? We have to make sure at the end of the day, we don't contribute to the problem of too much information that we help solve the problem. We have 37 directors across different conditions. And then each of those um, essentially have a group of um, experts underneath them that help us fill out the categories. But every one of these experts you'll speak to, whether they're the top expert at HSS or the top expert at um, Yale or, their, or, or anywhere, what we learn from each of them is that every person they can help, they'd like to multiply that by hundreds. And that's why they're interested in working with us, is that they're, they're very satisfied with the people that they can speak to one on one, but they, they want to amplify that. They want to be reaching thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. And I use obesity as an example. In obesity, there's only about 4,800 certified obesity specialists in the United States. Yet as a country, we're almost at 50%. It's becoming an epidemic. Mm -hmm. That's our next epidemic. So what happens when we educate people? Where do we send them? 
I mean, re where are they really going to get the help they need? So what we're hoping to do is by bringing them into the fold, that we'll give them the strategies and tools and information to help get them on the right road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Sharon, you bring up a good point um, because I was having a conversation with some, with a different uh, chronic condition advocacy group, and they brought up the the fact that there were such a small amount of specialists within this particular. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people were waiting six months to get an appointment. So it is important um, pre diagnosis and post diagnosis to have you know, other information, other other uh, places to go to, because you're only going to get to see that specialist for a short period of time mm -hmm. infrequently. And do you feel like that's a place where, where you can play? Yeah. So one of the fundamental um, sort of um, offerings that we have is access to the physician. So you can't talk to all these people, right? Because there's just too many people trying to get in. Right. But what we're doing is we're creating a, a personalized approach to um, to questions, Q&A, that people can go into and they can have a guided discussion based on information from one of the experts. We're also creating live summits where we do live meetings like this, but we take questions. We have an audience there and they actually we take questions from the audience because we want to get real people questions answered. So what we what we want to do is we don't want to prolong it. I don't know about you, but I've been waiting, you know, sometimes I'll wait three, four or five months to see an expert and then find out I'm not at the right place. It actually mm -hmm. should be somewhere else. And then I have to start over. Right. So it's not a very efficient system the way we've set it up. So if we can help cut through some of that and we can actually help get people to the front of line, so to speak, mm -hmm. by getting some of their questions answered, we're hoping that we can get people in the right place at the right time so that they can have the best chance for the best outcome. Mm -hmm. You know, I love this conversation about um, asking questions because there are data that show that if we're asking questions of our healthcare providers, whether it's in our consultation room or as you're saying, through access to experts, you wind up with a better with a better health outcome at the at, at the end of the day. So even the simple questions are like, well, what other options are there? Or can you please explain the stakes to me of this uh, once again, you know, making sure that we really understand it. Like we say, like, what's health literacy? You know, it's that it's having that confidence of understanding. Right. Um, and I think I think answering questions is paramount. But how about knowing what questions to ask? Exactly. You know, right? you know how are we supposed to know that? Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're dealing with these diseases, we're dealing with these different things that are going on. But at the end of the day, I don't always know what the next question should be. So our mm -hmm. goal is really by these guided discussions to say, if you asked us this, you probably should ask this and this, mm -hmm. or if you want more information on this, this and this. And the same holds true is by giving and giving access to the same Q&A to families and caregivers. You know, we all are going to be a patient one day, but we're all really caregivers, whether we have our own children or we have parents. At some point in our lives, we're taking care of one or the other. Right. And mm -hmm. it's hard to hear. And you, you really want to be a partner in their care. And you may have different questions than they have. They may be afraid to ask certain questions. So having this ability for them to really educate themselves and be that other sort of um, partner in care, I think, really is something mm -hmm. that will help lessen some of the anxiety that comes with some of these conditions and also helps again, point people to the right place. Mm -hmm. Totally agree with you. I know Joyce went, you know, that's the, the reason why her United States of healthcare just, and, and I just went through something similar, uh, much less intense than, than Joyce's, but just being there for that person and being those eyes and ears. And also as the caring person, you have a level of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think sometimes we forget about it. Of course, the patient is front and center and you want to make them feel as good as possible. But there is an, uh, a flow off of the the other, you know, the caregiver is a stakeholder, a family. Mm -hmm. And how are you giving them that peace of mind or or the information? Because you don't want your anxiety to impact the patient's anxiety. Right. Like and, I, right. About that. and I think it's I think it's critical to give them a role. Right. right. So, yes. you know, some people some people need more information. Some people need less. Some people need um, to be around people more. Some people want to be more by themselves. Um, so if, if we can empower the, the family, you know, any chronic yeah. condition or any real serious condition, acute condition affects the whole family. It doesn't mm -hmm. affect one person. Nobody's going through this alone. 
So yeah. if we can give each people the information and arm them with the tools, we can actually set them up for better success because then they know how to relate to each other. They know the questions to ask. In our Parkinson's programming, one of the things we ask the experts to talk about is, when do I tell my family? When do I tell my coworkers? Mm -hmm. yeah. When do I let my boss know? What are my rights underneath that? What do I have to prepare for? What is this going to look like in five or 10 years? You know, what should I be thinking of today? And then the idea is not to give it all to them at once, because, you know, the last thing you want when you get that diagnosis is be thinking about, oh, my God, like I have to deal with this the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's helping people choose and guide them and show them this is a journey. This is a path. This is a right. successful path. You can and it's there's no testing on our path. You mm -hmm. can. You can, you know, no one's going to give you a grade, so you can go at your right. own speed and at your own time. Right, your own time. So, so tell us about some of your special projects. Like, what makes Metaflix different? Like, why, why, right. why do we want to go there? So, I'm hoping it's the storytelling and it's the people telling the stories. Um, we're working with a, a a surgeon right now who actually at one time was 460 pounds. And we're telling his love story. He has a love story with his mm -hmm. wife. And we're telling some about somebody who lost um, a couple hundred pounds and kept it off and has been successful. But he tells the story about not only having weight bias, but also having just, um, he, he's black and just having the bias of that. He calls it the double whammy. Mm -hmm. But we're telling a health story, but we're telling in a very relatable story about mm -hmm. somebody who couldn't really um, had a fight really against a lot of odds just to get to where he was while he was dealing with this this issue, this health issue. And his whole family came along. His, his wife has written books about stealthy, healthy eating and how she substituted foods. They talk about vantage points, how they would go into a situation and he would be feeling one thing because he couldn't fit in the seat and she'd be feeling another thing because he couldn't enjoy a show. And it was like, they just weren't really communicating. So we're hoping that's the kind of thing that will be different. We're working on um, a, a program that should be very exciting for Alzheimer's patients that um, we think we'll really bring people in and help chat, tap into that a little bit. Um, and then we're working on the personalization, really bringing the whole mm -hmm. platform into a personalized journey so that you really will be guided. You'll be um, served up different things, maybe something you might be interested in, something you should know about, maybe someone you should meet. That's great. That's great. Really great. Super, 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 super. So at some point you'll be up for Academy Awards Emmys, things like that. <laughs> I certainly hope so. We've been trying to work with only Emmy Award winning producers. We have one who's won, who has been nominated 23 times. So we're hoping for a win. Uh, so we'll see. But that's not really what it's about. The, the part's about really, I mean, what we say that when we when we promote to people that we're doing that because we want to tell the best stories. We want the stories to come through. But we also want to put the power back into the physician and the experts back into their hands. We want them to tell us what we should be doing. And when, it's not one way fits all. So we need yeah. to give multidisciplinary right. um, options. We have to take into account where people live, how they live. And we have to be really, we have to really say to them, you know, we don't all have access to the same, um, the same opportunities, but we have access, we should have access to the same information. If nothing else, we should know the same information. And that's really where we're trying to live. And that's sort of the playground we're living in. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very exciting for us. We're meeting incredible people. I haven't met one physician or one expert or one patient who doesn't want to help other people have a better experience than they did. And it's really rewarding. You know, we, we beat up the this industry, the healthcare industry so much every day. But really, it's a collection of really good people, smart people trying to do things that help people. And if we can let that shine through and focus on that, and um, I think that, you know, hopefully we're onto something. No, I think I definitely think you are. I think there's so much to be said about being able to tell those empathetic stories, right? That anybody can relate to. You can relate to struggles and then the solutions. Okay, here are the pro tips. That's what we try to do at United States of Healthcare. Yeah, we're going to tell you a story, right? So that you can relate to that story and that human being. And then we're also going to give you the pro tips. Like even those of us who know a lot about healthcare, we wind up in the system and we're like, oh, holy smokes, even I, with everything that I know, am coming up against hard, hardness, right? So how do I then, you know, share an experience, a tip, a tip so that somebody else doesn't have to go through, go through it the same way, you know, learn, learn, even when you know what question to ask, it's how to ask the question. There's even a, you know, there's, there's, there's that too. 
Um, right, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, like everything that the three of us are doing, multiply that by the hundreds and thousands of people trying to do stuff. We're trying to cut through that. We're trying to create, again, a path. And the path isn't to substitute for what anyone else is doing. The path is to help you and illuminate those places along the way right. so that together we can see what will work for us. And I think it's important to understand that there, we're all individuals. So even though there's a median that you're talking about of this, okay, this is where the baseline is for our, for these particular um conditions, there's also that individuality that we have to account for that I think sometimes get lost. Yeah, um, absolutely. And it's great that you're honoring that. Yeah. And we have to tell good positive stories. You know, there's a lot on TV yeah. that sort of likes to look at the underbelly of what people are going through. Yeah. It's not helpful for people who are in the middle of it. So yeah, it really we have is. to find a way and, and that's the balance of education of edu um, edutainment. So the education with the entertainment. Right. You know, making sure that you serve each up together equally. So that at the yeah. end of the day, you leave people with something that's positive and something that's pro proactive. So just checking to see if anybody has any questions out there. We're, we're coming to the end of our time. We like to keep okay. these reasonably timed. Yeah. So Joyce, you want to close it out? Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much, like Sharon, for being with us tonight and uh, this afternoon. <laughs> wherever <laughs> wherever you are and uh, thank everyone again our audience for being with us and for um continuing on in this quest for uh better health care for for ourselves for our families and for the planet it's great thank you great. Thank thanks you. for joining us sharon thank you and check us out at www.metaflix.com oh, absolutely thank you thank you bye. thanks very much bye bye